War has come to Naral. In Dungeons and Dragons, Conquest of Naral. Welcome to the Board Game Closet. I'm Rod. And I'm Tim. And today we're looking at... Conquest of Naral. And if you haven't subscribed, we'd like you to jump over there and just click that little button and subscribe. So at the Board Game Closet, what we do is we rate games by using dice. And these dice, we have... Green, that means buy it. White means I'll play it. Or red means I hate it and don't buy it. So once a week what will happen is we'll come out with a video. Myself, Jimmy, or Tim. And we'll, and we'll give you the rating right off the bat. Tell you what we think of the game. And then we'll spend the rest of the time talking about the game itself. Alright. So let's start off right away. Let's go ahead and do our rating. And flip. A green and a white. <laughs> okay, so uh, why did you give it a white? Uh, I give it a white because it's a, um, even though it is a nice strategy game, it boils down to like a risk-like game uh, a lot, where it's really just whoever rolls the best on the dice. Okay. But I still liked it. It's still a nice, solid strategy game. The, the game itself is built well. Okay. For me, uh, first of all, I am a big D&D fan, so I love the world that it has right here. Uh, all the characters and stuff. I, I like the miniatures. I thought the miniatures were well done. I enjoy how they incorporated the dungeons into the game itself. Uh, so all in all, I just—I mean, I, I just enjoyed the way they did the game. I mean, if I had any flaws with it, I would say that it'd have to be with maybe uh, I'd probably like more armies because there's four armies that you get in the game, and I would like to probably have a wider variation. But as it is, they do a good job with those four armies. All right, so let's uh, talk about how this game is played. First of all, it's if you've played Axis and Allies, which is the one that I'd probably put it closest to. That's pretty much what this is in the Dungeons and Dragons world. Uh, you, so basically, you're just trying to take over the areas. You're gonna get more points when you're taking those areas. Uh, each piece, being a, maybe a dragon versus a a giant, we use different die for their attacks. So in other words, like with the dragons, you're using a twenty sided die to try to hit, and with the uh, giants, I believe it was a ten sided. But so each piece gives you different abilities. Also, some of them get to attack early on and then basically you can get the first attack where the other ones have to attack at the normal range um some of them have a range attack some have a move they can move multiple spaces so it's all the typical type stuff that you'd find in an access analysis game but now in this fantasy world and within the fantasy world what we have is we've got humans we got elves we've got the undead and we have the orcs and normally, you know, you, can, you, you within the two or four players, you'd have either the two against the other two, or you even do a free-for-all all four against each other. Let's talk about the sequence of play in this game. So basically, uh, it's a lot like Risk and Axis of Allies and, and the way it plays, where, uh, but in this one, it's four armies, So and it's in a set order for those. So a specific order, I think it's um, it goes the... The black army, the gold army, the red army, the silver army. And it, that that's set. No matter how many players you have, it goes in that order. So then for each person's turn, they do the sequence of draw a card, move their guys, fight the battles, then do the after battle repositionings, reinforce and collect income. Right? So the, the basic uh, the basic sequence of play, right? right. Same, one of these same thing you see in any, any of those games. So the cool thing is like each each army has their own event deck and that's what it's talking about drawing and this is what really changes the gameplay from just being a risk like where you just moving guys and then just rolling the dice uh, because these cards will give you stuff that like you either have to play immediately or it'll let you hold it into your hand and then you'll be able to uh, kind of it's kind of like an evening out kind of gameplay where It'll let you come back from behind and stuff like that in right. case you're like losing a lot of places and stuff like that. So that's really nice. And each one is flavored for the specific army that's in there. Like the the humans, the elves, the orcs, uh, the undead. They all have like stuff that's flavored for them. And when you're traveling, you know, when you're making your moves across the continents, basically, uh, some of the stuff that I found that was really neat was I like the fact that they're referencing all the old uh, D&D stuff. White Plume Mountain, I the Beholder, all those type of things. So you're actually having to fight those fights. And it's not as easy as just I step in that spot, I win automatically. You actually have to beat them to get the reward that you get for them. And then, of course, that reward would normally help you out during your 
you know, against your fights against the other uh, characters that you're playing or the people that you're playing. Right. With. Yeah. That's that's what these tiles are here. These are the 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 monster tiles for the dungeons, and basically, like here's the Temple of Elemental Evil. Uh, you'll have you'll start off with just one. Uh, you'll have to send in a hero to actually fight in there. Like heroes and wizards can fight inside the the dungeon, and then they'll. Uh, when you when you actually beat the monster, you get a treasure card, like you said. But then it gets harder, and you have to put more monsters down to beat it again. So it's not you can't just constantly just keep beating the same kind of monsters over and over again. The one thing I like the way this game is set up, it's fairly fast play. I mean, it's 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 not like you're waiting around forever. Next is now when you play. Sometimes it's like an hour before you get to your side again. Right. On this right here, even if there's four players, you get to each other fairly quick. It's fairly easy. There's not too much but there's enough to keep it interesting um so it keeps a nice flow to the game which is some of the stuff that i enjoyed about it yeah there's not a lot of maintenance whatever to do for each player right it's basically just take your turn and then move on uh so and when they were when they built this game they did a good job of making sure that you had a nice size board colorful using all the standard dice that you'd use in dungeons and dragons so it keeps that flavor to it uh everything that they did with this they really did make sure that they weren't leaving you know, pulling themselves away from that, and that it wasn't access and allies, so you didn't have a bunch of six siders. You were sticking with the D and D world, which is one of the things I really liked about it. All right, and that's our review of Conquest of Narath. Uh, you can check out our other videos on YouTube. Check out our website; we got a lot more reviews there. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, um, all the social media. Uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. And always support your local hobby shop and buy this game. It's a good game. <laughs>